All right, let's get to this. Uh, the Intercept had a piece up uh, yesterday afternoon, and um, I mean, there's 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 a couple of different stories associated with this. Not not the least of which that its source, its apparent source, uh, was arrested and will be charged with espionage, I believe. There's also the element of the uh, Intercept being rather skeptical about these things. Oh, yeah. And I think clearly you should be um, skeptical about, um, about all of this. But there are some realities here. The reality is that there was an NSA document. The reality is it was leaked to the Intercept. And it appears that there was at least an attempt by Russia to not influence the election by psyops or whatever that is called, you know, publicly, um, you know, by, by, by shaping perception of the candidates. But according to the Incept, uh, intercept. Russian military intelligence executed a cyber attack on at least one U.S. voting software supplier and sent spear phishing emails to more than 100 local election officials just days before last November's presidential election. This is according to a highly classified intelligent report, uh, like I say, obtained by the Intercept. Now, here's here's what you have to be clear about. There is no assessment that the Russians actually successfully did anything other than perhaps gain access to, I think, one computer. Um, will you turn off that microphone or just press it because I'm getting your typing and whatnot. I'm, no, no, it's weird. Something's coming through. Um, so... But what is clear is that there was an attempt. And the real concern here is not so much that there, there was an attempt that could have dramatically changed vote tallies, though there are hypotheticals how that could have happened. But the main concern seems to be that it's possible that you could mess with voter registration files and basically create havoc in the voting areas, which would lead to people basically being disenfranchised from their votes. Now, there's two separate issues here. One is, going forward, there's a clear vulnerability that needs to be addressed. And this is um, a vulnerability that we are completely susceptible to. You'll recall that back in February, the House Administration Committee, in a six to three vote, which was along party lines, six Republicans, three um, Democrats, voted to eliminate the Election Assistance Commission, which helps states run elections, and it's the only federal agency charged with making sure voting machines can't be hacked. So we have a clear vulnerability, and at the very least, according to the NSA and this document, an attempt to exploit one part of that vulnerability. The other is, is that Russia clearly was interested in not just influencing our election, but perhaps shaping the outcome. It didn't seem like they got there. Russia General Staff Main Intelligence Directorate Actors. This is uh, the document. Executed cyber espionage operations against a named U.S. company in August 2016. This is evidently to obtain information on election-related software and hardware solutions. They seem to have basically had two things. And this, this attack, this cyber attack, was not terribly sophisticated. 
It's more or less what you keep telling your parents not to click on one of those links. They did set up, and this is why I think, and because I don't know what Russian general staff main intelligent directorate actors means. But to the extent we've speculated about this stuff, I imagine the Venn diagram that you draw between Russian general staff main intelligence directorate actors and guys in Eastern Europe who steal credit cards or passwords of other um, commercial sites, I would imagine that Venn diagram is not totally overlapping, but pretty darn close. And for plenty of things. Like, well, of course. Know, that's yeah. my point. Yeah, yeah. Because it's actors. It doesn't necessarily mean that they work in the building. The CIA does the same thing. And, I mean, I don't know if they do the same thing with the same people, but they, a lot of this stuff gets outsourced. And, I mean, I get these phishing things, I don't know, it seems like one or two times a week where they'll create a fake Google site. They will convince you that you need to go re-enter your credentials. They get your credentials. They then go in and mock up. They supposedly broke into this company. And there's reports that the company is this company VR. It's one that makes software. It's not, nobody's clear, but there's speculation. And uh, as to who the company is. And what they did is they went in and then posed as basically representatives of VR systems and then posed as VR systems people to a local elect uh, county and I think county election officials, 112 of them. And it is unclear at this time how many of them got pulled in, and what they would have had access to if they got access. The NSA analysis does not draw any conclusions as to whether or not the interference had any effect on the election's outcome. Um, the assessment concludes with a high confidence that the Kremlin ordered an extensive multi-pronged propaganda effort to undermine public faith in U.S. democratic process, denigrates uh, Clinton, and harm her electability and potential presidency. It did not attempt to assess what effect the Russian efforts had on the election. Russian intelligence obtained and maintained access to elements of multiple U.S. state or local electoral boards. I mean, much of this had been broadly reported by CNN some time ago, I believe. They focused on parts of the system directly connected to the voter registration process. As described by the classified NSA report, the Russian plan was simple. Pose as an e-voting vendor. Trick local government employees into opening Microsoft Word documents invisibly tainted with potent malware that could give hackers full control over the infected computers. There were seven potential victims at the company uh, like, like I say, largely believed to be VR systems. I don't know if that's correct or not. The NSA assessed that this phase of the spear, spear phishing operation was likely launched on either October 31st or November 1 and sent spear phishing emails to 122 email addresses. So once they got into VR systems back in like uh, August or September, they waited two months until the uh, couple of days before the election and then sent out fake emails from a supposed VR systems or a company like that to 122 email addresses associated with no named local government organizations who were probable officials involved in the management of voter registration systems. The NSA is uncertain about the results of the attack And they're not sure whether the aforementioned spear phishing deployment successfully compromised the intended victims and what potential data could, could have been uh, accessed by the cyber actor. Interestingly, apparently in um, 
December, Obama said that in early September, he reached out to Putin and said, stop doing this. <laughs> and they thought that he had, and apparently they don't. This is information that the NSA secured in March. So that is the uh, primary story. And the value of this, is, like I say, is twofold. One, it means going forward, there needs to be concerted effort by the federal government to figure out how to maintain the integrity of our voter file system and our voting systems. Not roll it back the other way as Republicans have done. Secondly, it just simply establishes, and maybe you don't believe uh, this NSA document. I mean, I don't think it's a, an illegitimate posture to be highly skeptical of what the uh, NSA puts out, even if it's supposedly leaked by someone who is um, not necessarily on board with the NSA agenda. But um, it further provides um, further evidence that Russia wanted to influence our election. And just to be clear, um, if Russia intended to influence our election, it would put them uh, squarely with where the United States has been in influencing other countries' elections, A. And B, my sense is that to the extent that there was any impact by the Russians, the impact was greater uh, for a number of other factors ranging from the Comey letter through towards um, Clinton's strategy, tactics, and that she was obviously a flawed candidate to, to begin with in, in many respects. Uh, but nevertheless, the idea that this whole Russia thing is some type of complete fabrication, I think, um, is getting harder and harder to defend. Another story associated with this is that the FBI has arrested a 25-year-old woman named Reality Lee Winner. Reality Winner. Reality it's very Thomas Pynchon. Well, yes, I would say. Apparently, this is what happened. And she has been charged under the Espionage Act. The FBI uh, affidavit filed with her arrest said she's worked for Pluribus International Corporation at a government facility in Georgia since February 13th. She is charged with providing a copy of a highly confidential, top secret NSA document. And here's how they found out it was her. Some of this is The Intercept apparently not using best practices. The Intercept, when they were going to the NSA to get comments on the story that they were preparing to write on this document, showed the NSA a copy of the document they had, which apparently was a copy in and of itself. The copy of the document, as opposed to being an original document, the copy showed some type of crease in the paper, which indicated that it was a copy. 
and there were specific signatures left by the copy machine. I don't know if it's expressly for this purpose, but it's the case. NSA's auditing system showed that six people had printed out the report, including Ms. Winner. Investigators then examined the computers of those six people and found that Ms. Winner had been in email contact with the news outlet, this being The Intercept, but the other five had not. So, look, here's one thing that you should know. If you're ever going to leak something to any outlet, you don't email them at any time. At any time. And in fact, if you've ever just casually emailed them years before, look for a different outlet. You don't use email. There are plenty of sources, or I should say, um, publications, online publications, that use things like WhatsApp or will use some type of like uh, virtual Dropbox. Take the time to look for those. Don't look for them on your own computer. You go to like an internet cafe or you go to a friend's house. Well, I mean, if you're just looking for that stuff at a friend's house, when you're over there, you just, you're noodling around, that's not a big deal. But you've got to be much more careful. The Espionage Act carries a sentence of up to 10 years in prison. Though conventional leak cases, according to the Times, have been typically uh, resulted in prison terms of one to three years. Understand that this pursuit of a leaker by the Trump administration is not new and without precedent. In fact, you don't have to go very far. Well, the precedent basically started under the Obama administration. It's one thing to go after leakers. It's another to charge them with the Espionage Act. And my understanding is that is... There may have been one case of it during the Bush administration, but it was more or less kept alive during the Obama administration and expanded the use. So this is another example of of why you don't want to give a president, even one that you trust, these powers or and not even necessarily powers, but um you don't want to normalize it when they do this because we have a habit in this country of electing other people after four or eight years. And <clears throat> sometimes that guy doesn't, or a gal, doesn't end up being the person you want them to be. <laughs> so you've basically given Donald Trump, like, you know, there's no outrage that's going to be generated about this woman going to jail for any period of time. Because basically, the Obama administration made it impossible to um, be outraged at the idea that someone is leaking this information. I mean, that's basically it. She mailed it, apparently, to The Intercept after removing the report on May 9th. Um, Winner's real mistake, again, was emailing with the Internet Intercept's reporters from a work computer. She was apparently asking for podcast transcripts for one of their podcasts. Oh, is that right? Yeah, you just don't want any contact whatsoever. And apparently they went and visited her at her home and questioned her, and she confessed to knowingly violating her security clearances. I mean, so uh, there it is. Uh, very strange indeed. And the uh, the long and short of it is, you know, 
it's unclear what we're ultimately going to know about any of the Russian Russian involvement. The idea of collusion to me still seems rather far fetched. I just don't understand. You'd have to be r really sloppy. Now, it's possible uh, Donald Trump would be read into something like this, but it's not, you know, the idea that the Trump organization does not know anybody except for Russia to, <laughs> to go and do spear phishing campaigns to get people's emails seems a little far-fetched to me. Hey, Sam Cedar here. Uh, folks, you probably heard about the whole uh, YouTube uh, advertiser apocalypse. Well, we're suffering from it, too. We need your help. If you want to keep this show alive, you want us uh, to be able to still put out uh, clips on a regular basis, head over to our Patreon page. Here's the link right here or down below there. And uh, just give us a couple bucks a month uh, and support this program. Really appreciate it.